welcome back to Red Glasses Talks. Our topic is Becoming a Person of the Word of God, the Bible. This is one of the most critical steps you will ever make is to become a person of the Word. Uh, so, studying the Bible is not an option. It's an essential. So, the question we're going to look at today briefly is this. Why study the Bible? I mean, why? Why should I even take the time uh, to study the Bible? In Genesis, the first book of the Bible, uh, you say, well, John, I knew that. Well, you wouldn't believe how many people, even Christians in our country, do not know the first book of the Bible is Genesis. There is no overall biblical memory of the Bible in our country today among Christians. Only 30-some percent of Christians out of 25%, as we said last time, or one of the other talks, only only 35% out of the 25% who are practicing Christians in the country even open their Bible. So I know what I'm talking about. So uh, Genesis chapter 12, we run into uh, a man named Abram. We call him Abraham, and his name was changed, as you might know, as uh, the story goes on. But God had called Abraham to, to uh, get the Mayfire van, pack everything up, his family and everything, and take off. He had no idea where he was going. Uh, he just said, God just said, go. And Abraham went. But along the way, and here's the simple point I want to make. In chapter 12, verse number, uh, let's see, 7, it says, so he built an altar there to the Lord. Then on down in verse number eight, he built an altar there to the Lord. In chapter 13, it says in verse number three, and he built an altar there. And in verse number 18, where he built an altar to the Lord. And so we see this reoccurring phrase, he built an altar to the Lord. Now, what does it mean that Abram or Abraham built an altar to the Lord? It was a place where he did business with God. He spent time with God. He opened his heart to God. God opened his heart to him. And if you study the life of Abraham, he's one of the great patriarchs of all of history and of all the Bible. But let's contrast him for a moment with another character. You may not be quite as familiar with this character, but his name is Lot. L-O-T. And so if you look in the 19th chapter of Genesis, this is what it says. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father, Lot. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son. She named him Benami. He is the father of the Amorites of today. You never see anywhere in the scripture where Lot did business with God, where Lot built an altar to the Lord, where Lot took time to open his heart to God and God opened his heart back to him. What was the result of that? The result of that was two of the most destructive races that have ever been on this planet, the Moabites and the Amorites. Do your study and you'll find that out. So building an altar, spending time with God for you and me is absolutely critical. Listen to this. For your life to be useful for the Lord, you must spend time with him in the scriptures. You got to do it. Now I want to read another verse or a couple verses. Psalm number one, and Psalms are some of my favorite parts of the scripture, but listen to the very first Psalm, Psalm one. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. Watch now, but they delight that which really fires them up. They delight in the law of the Lord, the scripture, meditating, thinking about it, chewing on it, meditating on it day and night consistently. So what's their life like when they do that? They're like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season through their lives. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. 
Verse four, but always notice the buts in the Bible, but not the wicked. They are like worthless shaft scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, those who are in his book, who spend time with him, who desire to follow his book. For the Lord watches over those kind of people, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. So what's the point of all that? Listen very closely. A blessed, happy life is the product of an uncompromising relationship with God. You cannot grow and mature and be all God meant for you to be while you're on this planet, unless you're a person of the book. So J.I. Packer, one of my favorite writers, who wrote a, a classic book years ago called Knowing God, said this, disregard the study of God through the Bible, and you sentence yourself to stumble and blunder through this life, blindfolded, as it were, with no sense of direction and no understanding of what surrounds you. So I'm going to challenge you today. Why don't you read Psalm 1? I read it. Why don't you see read Psalm 1 this week every day? Six verses. You can do it. Read Psalm 1. Meditate on it. Think on it. And ask God how he wants you to apply the principles of Psalm 1 to your life. You think about it. And watch what God does in and through your life.